My name is Fumi Ajala and I'm the face and I run the brand Fumi Ajala Travels and yes, today is my birthday. I'm a May baby. I'm a Taurian. I'm very happy <laughs> and I'm really like, I'm in Taurus and uh, I'm a traveler as well, but that's really not my full-time job. So kind of like, how will I put it? Uh, I do a couple of things, many things, and uh, but I love and I want to focus more on the travel aspects and the tourism development in Nigeria generally. So I wrote down a couple of questions I was asked and I think uh, as the conversation progresses, I might get to um, kind of like uh, answer any questions that popped up on the uh, on, on the storyline. So, uh, Om of Maggie asked me my career journey. <laughs> okay, so Fumi Ajala Travels is my personal brand. So, I have a personal brand and uh, I have official work that I do. So, I'll say I love traveling. It's kind of like a fun spot for me. I love to or try out new places. I'm kind of like, I'm quite adventurous, yes. Because I remember, uh, I'm sort of like a workaholic. I work a lot. So my own form of enjoyment or relaxation is traveling. And it's really not your normal form of traveling, like uh, you go to a hotel or resort or whatever <laughs> no <laughs> tell me there's something very interesting something very educative something historical <laughs> uh about a place i'll go down is certain i will surely surely go there i can assure you that so um i finished serving a couple of years back doing my nyc but after NYC, I was looking for a job, sort of like, but uh, from school, I was part of a student organization called ISEC that was progressed around um, development. So it, it's challenged a lot of my mindset. I just want to keep active and be positive. I learned a lot while in school. And being an ISECA means you get to travel for conferences. So we have conferences within Nigeria, we have conferences in Africa, we have Europe, we have international. Hello, Mofi. <laughs> so uh, a, a lot of people kind of like, we traveled as ISECAs. So indirectly, that is where the whole thing kind of like stemmed for. I mean, stemmed from, but the, the fact remains, as a child, my mom always took us on trips. So I had cousins and uncles that live up north. I have uh, my aunt, she lives in Abel Puta, and I grew up in Quara State. So that, that is what well, I grew up in, in Lauren Quara State. So when it's the long holiday, which is uh, almost around, uh, so like six to eight weeks, the long vac, that's when we travel. So I enjoyed the train rides, up, going up north to Kano, Kaduna. My uncle worked as a lecturer in ABU, the Samaru campus. So I <laughs> kind of like had fun traveling. So it all stemmed from there. So back to my career issue. Uh, after youth service, I was looking for a job. I did a couple of jobs here and there in Abuja, moved back to Lagos. Then I saw this advert in the newspaper and it was about, oh, do you want to change Nigeria? Do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? If you don't mind, I mean, you can join us. Our team is going to be, oh, okay. I signed up. I kind of like put in my applications and everything. And lo and behold, the whole process of waiting to even know whether you were chosen or not took, I think, about <clears throat> two months. Then after the first written test, before you get called back, if you were part of the selected few, took, 
another like almost three months it was like the longest interview of sorts i've ever done in my life so by the time we got the job and we went for training it turned out to be a newspaper like it was a media house if anybody ever remember 234 next 234 next was the newspaper then so i was like okay uh i'm coming from a science background i read computer science in school now <laughs> i'm not supposed to work in a media organization so i almost kind of like gave up on the fact that number one i don't write but i forgot some habits i had as a child as a kid when i was in primary school i love reading and my mom used to joke with me that probably it's because i read a lot <laughs> i read a lot that that's why i kind of like use glasses i start using my glasses from primary four yes that's that's when i start using my glasses from primary four so i kind of like read a lot then i joined the debating society in school when i became almost like i do kind of like because I had finished the school curriculum by the time I was in primary four and I have to wait two more years to finish primary school. So my mom, my teacher kind of like talked to my mom that I joined the debating society. So I joined the debating society in school. So I used to write, I would write my old arguments and stuff. I had a family friend that was a lawyer back then. So he would come in and help me craft uh, the old thing into different points. So I just write my thoughts the first thing i ever write concerning my debates or all the old script for my debates i i kind of like put them down first and foremost then my lawyer family friend comes in we have arguments back and forth then he starts structuring the old thing which i shows to my teacher so i kind of like have a reading writing and learning background from childhood which i didn't really remember so much back then so I got into the media house and uh, having read computer science, it was, uh, luckily for me, it was an integrated newsroom. An integrated newsroom means you have the online section and the uh, paper, like uh, people that write for the print. So you have the online and print all in the same newsroom. So the whole process had to do with how you write your news from, from when you start a story topic as you're writing for the newspaper you are getting materials for online as well so it was a 21st century newsroom so it was just it fits the fact that i read computer science the first place they pushed me on was the online desk because it has a lot to do with uh whether you like it or not you still have to do a bit of html and stuff you're dealing with the back end you're so they after the fact that I read computer science came very, very handy. So that is how my writing and the whole media career sort of stemmed from. I didn't go into media intentionally. It sort of found me. <laughs> That's all I can say. So I was at Next for like the three years of its lifespan before it's folded up. I was on the, I was, uh, on the online desk. And from there, I was writing and doing a couple of things. So we, we shoot videos, we write. So then uh, after a while, when the whole thing went off, uh, as the company was about folding up totally, I got a job offer. I, ha I had about three job offers, but there was one that I got that was uh, from a state government to come and run the yeah, digital media platform for the states. Oh, I've really never done something like that, but I went and I worked in the capacity of a senior technical assistant to a governor for three years. And uh, I can say, yes, the, the state platform was quite okay. I, my team and I did the best. So after the first term of my boss that he didn't get reelected, that was in 2014. So I just kind of like <laughs> looked at it, oh, what next then i remember that i used to love having fun traveling and while i was in the newsroom i do write for the art and culture i do write travels for the art and culture section i actually write for i mean i think i wrote for almost all the desks i wrote for nation metro entertainment 
art and culture and i was writing almost on a weekly basis travel stories for art and culture so i was like okay why don't you just start it again i did have a blog which i kept somewhere and i wasn't consistent with that so and uh that is how i just picked up full time of traveling and i travel i decided to start exploring things i think i've missed out on as a result of being just focused on the work being a crazy workaholic not really having a life kind of like not have a social life so um i went in for it and that was how i started traveling and i got interested in photography sort of even while i was traveling while i traveled writing the travel stories for next most of the pictures used were my picture but i was shooting just auto I got a birthday gift back then from someone that gave me a camcorder that takes picture and videos together so it was fun i used it to take all the pictures that i had back then then i said okay what can i do to what can i learn better let me learn how to undo my camera in a professional way so i did a bit of training when i in 2014 when the old thing went south so I started another learning process. It was a bit difficult trying to like get yourself back again. And uh, there were a couple of lessons I learned in that period. So I started building who is Fumi Ajala, what is it that Fumi really wants to do, what does she love to do. So that's how I started building the Fumi Ajala travels uh, brand. So I tried to discover waterfalls in Nigeria, Try to go up north. I kind of like I went up north, went south, try southeast, and uh, a couple of places I've been. Yes. So, and in the process of traveling, I was learning as well. I found a couple of my friends that love traveling as well, but um, I don't really like. Uh, is it that you do group or you do? solo but i'm more of like a, a solo traveler so that kind of like answers a beat and now i'm back to another kind of like nine to nine so that's why a bit of my traveling has taken uh a step back for a while because i now have uh another job which i'm concentrating on so i think that answers all of maggie's question about my career journey sort of then a different kind of beauty asked me what is your greatest fear <sighs> Hi, Malara. <laughs> oh, what is my greatest fear? Mm. I think uh, my greatest fear is not uh, fulfilling everything I wish and I dreamed of, um, of really doing in life. Because I've come to realize something that we all hide behind fear. Even presently, um, I'm scared of the uncertainty that uh, this is my whole full-blown dream concerning travels. I really, hello inside Jigawa, how are you? <laughs> so I want to create a sort of like um, my dream for tourism in Nigeria, Africa. It's to tell the stories that are not told. In the exact way it happens not in the way other people tell our stories for us that is more of the reason why I go at it like I don't have funds anywhere so uh, for traveling I do work save and then use my money to travel so because I've been asked the question before that am I a trust fund kid and I'm like, I'm not a trust fund baby. Hi, Petrina. Hi. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you. So I, I'm not a trust fund kid, but I, I think there's something like, uh, you know, when you tell you that, what are you passionate about? That it's not something you would do consistently without getting paid for it. That you don't have money, but you just have to do that thing. That's the way I feel about tourism in Nigeria. And uh, the fact that tourism in Nigeria has been neglected to a level. And I think our idea of tourism is so different. What people see as tourism in Nigeria is uh, hotels, shopping malls and stuff. So to, to the fact of my greatest fear, my greatest fear is 
for all the ideas I have in my head for what I want to do. I'm scared that I might not be able that if I don't get to actualize them and I hide behind <laughs> the fear itself. So it's 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 a crazy one because we all have our fear and I really don't have my fear about it. I'm scared of the unknown. I'm scared of tomorrow that if I take a, a step, what's on the other side? You know, I, I just want to be sure I have this in my hand, but apparently I've started learning that life is really not like that. That is what I've come to learn. I have a coach, which is some of the things I'll talk about later. It's my development plan, my development for my own self-development. And it's like, we're all scared of, we just want to be sure, oh, I have money in hand in case anything happens. No, you're not going to do anything. If you're very sure you have something in your hand, you will just relax. So, uh, Beauty, I think, I hope I answered your question on that. Then, excuse me, inside Jigawa Hacks, have I ever been to Jigawa? No, I've not been to Jigawa. <laughs> I really have not, but I hope one of my, one of the things I want to do actually is to cover the north. I think I've done almost all the southwest. I've done a couple of south south. I've done southeast. I've been to a couple of states in the north, actually. I've been to a lot of places in the north. But, uh, <laughs> but um, I think the major problem of traveling to the north is the security issue right now. Because, you know, we have this thing, people don't really believe the northern part of Nigeria is the best place. When it comes to for a photographer, the northern part of Nigeria is heaven. It's a photographer's heaven. The landscape, that's where you find blue skies. The landscape is amazing. You know, our whole idea of the north is supposed to be dry, arable land full of sand. But the northern part of Nigeria is... <laughs> is filled with mountains and stuff so uh okay <laughs> it's filled with mountains and stuff so it, it's a very beautiful place so yes jiga is one of the states i hope to go very soon then have i ever been to a bar uh yes i passed through a bar but not really like come down and explore a bar you know what it means now if you want to explore a bar maybe i'll carry you with me we'll go together and Petrina, am I going to start taking people along on my trips? I do have friends that go along with, actually. <laughs> yeah, Tokyo area, right? It's the best part of Nigeria. Uh, so, I do have people I travel along with, but, but this is the issue with me. Remember, I take pictures. Like I said, I'm a visual storyteller. So, I don't travel because I want to take selfie. I want to do a lot of things. No. That's why you barely find uh, my own pictures on my page. When I travel, I focus more on the story around me, the people, the landscape, the history of the places. So those are the places, uh, those are the things that make me travel. That is what I go for when I travel to kind of like learn and experience because you learn from people and... Um, Nowadays, when people travel, it's for the gram. And I, I'm not going to be very patient with people that don't have... <laughs> yes, surely, that is have uh, the same mindset that I have. Traveling is fun when you have the same goal for traveling. Let, let, let's just put it at that, Petrina. So that's the only thing that that's the only thing that will make me travel with you. I have friends that travel with because we put down our itinerary, we explain to ourselves what do we want to do. Like Malara Brown is on this uh this live call right now. Malara is my friend and we've traveled to a couple of <laughs> a couple of places. Yeah <laughs> a couple of places and um yeah, we've traveled to a couple of places together. We've explored. She runs a travel courtroom as a business. And um, for me, it's, it's, it's kind of like because of that, and I'm still trying to find that place of the storytelling, the taking people along, <laughs> the taking people along kind of with me on traveling. So I, I hope so. 
Then uh, Chidi Maibe Mary asked me what is biomedicine to start traveling. So, um, like we all know commonly, people say Ajala. Ajala means a traveler. So a lot of people are always shocked when they realize that is really my own surname. My name is Fumi Ajala. So, <laughs> and in my family, I'm the only one that caught the travel bug. Like, I can be on the road for eight hours without getting tired. So, it's, it's that one. So, the inspiration from traveling is just, I love to explore. I, I love to explore. There are some crazy places I've been in this country. And in the middle of everything, I start shouting. Nobody sends me. My mom doesn't know where I am. <laughs> I think Malara, we, we've been to, if you've ever been to a uh, uh, waterfall in Kwara State, <laughs> it's, it's a crazy one. So, uh, <laughs> so it's, it's a really crazy one. And then when you climb a bike going somewhere, you drop off midway, you, you and the bike man, you're busy tolling the bike along, then you climb back, then you come down, then you climb again. That's the terrain. The terrain is very bad. And then, um, if you've ever been to Farin Rua Waterfalls in uh, Nasarawa State, you have to cross seven rivers. Actually, it's not a joke. You, the, only one, the first one is the only one that has a bridge. The remaining six rivers, you pass in the middle of, you pass through the middle, like you walk across the river. There's no bridge or anything. You have to walk. So, even bike man take it, it kind of like uh, push the bike to the other end of the place as well. So, that is it. So, uh, but the inspiration as I gradually started traveling, I started ex finding out lots of interesting places in Nigeria that people have not been, that we are not talking about. And uh, because the question that I keep asking is, why is it that tourism is not making money for us in Nigeria as it ought to? That's the major question. Like, what is wrong with our leaders that they're not looking at tourism as a potential? In Nigeria alone, on a daily basis, tourism can make us five billion a day. If we put all the old tourist attraction sites in Nigeria, if we put them to work, we can make five billion a day. Five billion a day. And that is like the minimum we can make. Because tourism has a lot to do. People don't understand we have different types of tourism. In Nigeria alone, we have uh, religious tourism. I've been to a couple of religious sites in Ogun State and I was shocked. People want to explore the Ifa culture. People want to explore what do you call the um, traditional culture, the traditional stories. We don't tell them. We don't think they're a form of tourism for us. Festivals in Nigeria alone, in the whole 36 states, if there is a calendar for the whole year managed by government, <laughs> we are playing with serious, like, we are joking with serious money. That is one side. So, that is a bit of religious culture. We're a country of religion. We have Muslim, Christian, tradition, uh, tradi the traditional people. So you can argue it whichever way you want. They can bring in money for this country. That is religious tourism. Then let's talk about food. <laughs> Do you know what it means when you have calabar cousins, uh, the Akwaibom, the fight between the Kalaba, the Akwaibom people, then the Igbos who tell you, you tell us the Yorubais, ah, Yoruba, you don't have soup. The only thing you don't have to do is lick pepe and you will do. Thank you. We don't have it for. You have it for. So, do you know how many dishes you can you, that, that is being cooked every day in the southeast, in the southwest, in the south south, in the north? Do you know creating corridor of food tourism? How much? can we bring in street food restaurants now i was watching something someone came a foreigner came to nigeria to come and do food of nigeria and we are licking our hand like seriously and we are here that is another one for it then let's go to fashion there is the fashion tourism in nigeria believe you me or not you have the adirais abekuta as a whole for Adire, the design. And it's not just only Abel Kuta. You have some part of design for, uh, there, there is the battle of Abel Kuta and Oyo. 
there's uh, the Oyo State people, or Oshun, being uh, the progenitor of Adire in Nigeria. You have Oshun and Abeokuta battling on that front. The different designs that can be created. What do you think will happen if our government help all those people come together? And for our New York Fashion Week, Milan Fashion Week, Fashion Show and all the rest, you have Adire on the walk, on the runway. Let's take it to that level. That is one. Then when you go to the east, you have the traditional wares of the Igbo people. The north, they have their own. The TV, the Igalas. I mean, <laughs> we are too blessed as a nation. That is another part of tourism. Fashion. I've listed three. Religion, food, fashion. Then let's talk about the amazing landscape God gave us as a country. Nigeria is beautiful. I can tell you Nigeria is beautiful. But the major problem is the beauty of Nigeria is in the interland. What I mean by the interland is where you have to cross seven rivers to get to a waterfall that is likened to Victoria Waterfall. Or you have to climb a bike, come down and do that and do this to get to the highest waterfall like in Lane, in Heights, in West Africa. I mean, then if you now talk about going to the Mambila Plateau, <laughs> come down is heaven. It's mind-blowing. So we have a lot. We have the landscape there. So I think um, so these are some of the things that inspire me to go about. Telling the stories of what I've seen, of traveling. I've not been to the whole 36 states to really explore it fully. But that is one thing. That is a, a bucket list goal that I have to achieve. And the reason why I keep doing what I do is... If we don't tell our stories, people will tell our stories for us in a warped fashion. A lot of people believe they know Nigeria or they know its people, they know the tradition, they know the culture. No, but they don't. It's only we. We are the ones that can tell our stories the way it's been told. For example, you're going up north. You cannot go to the north as a female without putting in your what you like in your box you have to have a scarf or and a long hijab i mean a, a long gown sort of because it's their culture so once you understand the people's culture their religion their tradition how is interwoven their everyday life you are fine no matter don't allow the stories of what <laughs> i think uh i i served in calabar in Corsica actually and when i was posted to Christopher, people came and like, ah, there is people there, there is people there. I'm like, I'll go. I really want to go. I want to see what it's all about. It was my adventurous spirit that led me to Cross River and I never regretted it. Some of the best relationships I've found, uh, I've formed in my adult life, people I've met in my adult life, lives I was able to mix with, interchange, uh, get involved with, was as a result of serving in Cross River. So sometimes I look back and I've said, if I had allowed what they told me to really get to me, and I said, oh, can you walk my posting to Lagos? I probably would have ate it. I don't know how it would have turned out, but I would have really ate it myself. I'd not even started traveling fully by that time, but I just enjoyed it. So the, the, the whole point for this conversation is um, it's my birthday. Yes. And I want people to actually see me for this is the person behind for me Achala Travels and I hope to do more of my face uh, like I put up my post today I have a lot of holding bags uh, I've been kind of like struggling with a bit of some things about myself uh, I always have this belief oh you have to look a certain kind to be in front of the camera well I, I've started I'm, I'm gonna start doing me for me so you're gonna see a lot of me so Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, thank you, Faith. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. So, I don't know if you have any more questions or if you want to do, if you want us to do this more often, uh, just let me know what topics we might be looking at. But basically, around tourism in Nigeria, if you've been following me, you'll see I started my sort of like an alphabet series for people at home and, uh, it, it, these are contents I've 
created that I've kind of like taken during my travels. And I feel now that everybody's at home, the children can actually learn because I realized something. We live in a place where we don't explore where we live. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm guilty of that as well. <laughs> yes, because once I get into work mode, it's work. And I don't tend to like explore my environment for certain reasons. Yeah. But I hope to do better. And I, I'm going to do better. That's what I'll say. I'm going to do better. So if you're going to have this kind of conversations more often, let me know what kind of topic. So far, it stems around tourism in Nigeria. And um, yeah. I think travels, tourism, fun, we will surely do it. Thank you everybody for wishing me a happy birthday. I really appreciate it. Yeah, so much love, calls, messages, and money. I'm really, really grateful. Thank you. Thank you.